So uh, just a little bit of a, of a game plan for tonight. God willing, we'll, we'll finish up Ashrei. Um, we'll talk about some halakha, some sukkah sort of some common things that pop up. And uh, perhaps at the end, depending on time, we'll talk a little bit very generally about Shamar and Shabbat, which are the brachos, which begin and end sukkah Um We're going to pick up where we left off with Ashrei, which is at the Pasuk of Ene, on page 68, among many other places, in the Art Scroll of English. Can anyone hear me okay? Yeah, great. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's, it's around a little bit more than halfway down the page. It's, it's the one in between the Samach and the Pei. But, uh, <laughs> The eyes of all look to you. The Ata no Sein Lohem and you give them their food at its time. Now again, similar to what we discussed last time, this pasuk is also a little bit, a little bit challenging. What do you mean all creatures look to God? I mean, that's literally what it means. It means all creatures look to God for food. So uh, do we believe the birds look to God for food? Do we believe the birds know there's a God? What, what are we talking about? So... The Radak explains that all creatures have set times at which it's part of their nature to search for food. You know, when you think about, it could either be, you know, in the morning, in the evening, you think about animals that have different hibernation schedules and, and things of that sort, but all animals have a natural sense of when they need to seek out food. And of course, it's true for us as human beings also. So this is even for the creatures that don't have a concept of God. So we think God have a concept of God, and we, we, we recognize that, you know, that God provides us food. And then, and, and by the way, I mean, thank God, it's not only the Jewish people who have a recognition. I mean, I, I would like to think that the Jewish people had a role in making sure everyone else understands that too. But people of many faiths ap ap appreciate this idea that we, we, we look to God for our food. But the Radax point is even other creatures they're looking to God at a given moment, they just don't know that they're looking to God. But, but they're programmed to be looking for things at a given moment. And so Radak says, what David Amalek is saying, is those creatures are also responding to that which God implanted within them. It's an interesting, it's an interesting thing to think about. And you give them their food, bi'ito, at its time, it actually is, is, is a little bit interesting. The grammar is slightly striking here. You give their food at its time. You would think it would be at their time, you'd think. So the Radak says the Pshat and the Pasuk is every single species has a designated and set time that for that species, for that type of food, that's when it's ideal to have the food. And you make sure that everything gets it. It's sort of like Noah and, 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 and the Ark on a, on, on a global level. I mean, that, that's sort of the concept. It's a very interesting thing to think about. Okay. Next verse. This is a very, very famous Pasuk. Um, if you remember from what we spoke about two weeks ago, this Pasuk is one of the prime reasons that we say this chapter till a few times a day. This very Pasuk. Hosea Hesiodecha. You open up your hand, and you give satiation to all life. Ratzon is a very, a very tough word to get here. Ratzon, based on will. We'll talk about that in a few moments, God willing. Um, just as an aside, it's brought in halacha that a person is supposed to strive to say this pasuk with more so than the other pasuk of Asher. This pasuk specifically, a person is supposed to strive to say with real focus. Because this is, this is what it's all about in a sense. It's kind of all boils, all, all, all boils down to this, that the most basic thing in our life, food, comes from God. Just to give a sense, I am not saying this practically, I would not recommend this practically, but there's a concept in halacha that if a person realizes they didn't say this pasuk with appropriate kavanah, they should go back and say from this pasuk to the end of Ashra over again. 
but but it's it's again I, I don't recommend the whole situation where a person's going back and forth that I have to run it and I have to run it and there's a lot of discussion about that a lot that we normally steer clear of it but just conceptually it's a very powerful thing to think about so just just to reflect on for a moment so God opens his hands and he gives all living things satiation at will how does this coincide with the preceding puzzle? You give all things their food at its time. You give all living things satiation at will. Is this the same thing in different words? Is this a different point? It sounds very similar to what we said in the previous puzzle. It's an interesting thing. So the Malbim says that God has different conduct with different creatures. And some creatures, God gives exactly what they need and no more than that. And some creatures, God gives a lot more than what they need. Obviously, we can imagine it along the spectrum of, of, of all life, and we, can, we see it within the spectrum of humanity, right? There, there are many people that get far more than they need on a given day, month, year, whatever, and uh, there are people who, well, with, by the goodness of God, get just enough to make it. And then obviously there are people who, who don't quite understand it, but there are people who don't seem to even get there. So the Malbum says, the first Pasuk, the Atono, saying, Lohem es achlam bi'ito. You give them their food at its moment. As we would say, bidiyuk, exactly. You give them the food appropriate for them, at the moment appropriate for them, nothing more, nothing less. That's one set. And another set is, And you give to all different types of life forms to whatever extent they want. And the, 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 the significance of the word want here is want versus need. And they get a lot more than they need. Now, obviously, according to this Peshat, the Malbim is going to have to tweak a little bit our understanding of the phrase, the whole chai all life, because the Malam's whole point is this doesn't necessarily work this way for all life, that they get brought so. So I guess the way the Malam would understand it is various types of life forms, but we're not just mankind, they're not just this creature, not just that, but, but various types of forms. I guess that's the way the Malam would understand it. Am I, did, I, did I lose anybody? Are we making sense? Yes. Is the Ratzon Hashem's Ratzon or the creature's Ratzon? So according to this shot, it would be Ratzon, the creature's Ratzon. The creature creatures ruts and will. Now, I don't think that means the person decides what they want, that God brings it, but the point is will as opposed to need. Mm -hmm. And then the point is they give, they satiate the person based on their, you know, imagine, imagine a person is sitting in someone's home and they give them a meal, and uh, do you want any more? So when we say I'm full, what do we mean when we say we're full? I mean, we, we ate a whole lot more than we need to. We ate a whole lot more than our doctor wants us to. So that's what we want. But, but there are many times, people, creatures, all kinds of situations, where a person just gets enough. I think that's the point of the problem. Um, so... But your earlier explanation was about Hashem's desire. Did he give some more... The earlier need? explanation is out of the puzzle. You give them their food in its time. Oh, okay. And then th th that seems like very... Look at the, look at the schedule look at the dosage, and this is exactly what happens, as dictated. The second verse, according to the Malbim, is Masvil Chochai Ratzon, to give to all creatures what their will, what, what their will is. That, that's a, it's a little complicated. But you say the second verse plays out Masvil, Sova, which means extra? It's interesting. Sova literally doesn't mean extra. Sova literally means what's needed. Um, to be satiated. So certainly you could, but literally satiated means you get what you need. I believe so. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, okay, now the Radak says, the Radak says that the meaning of this Pasuk, that you give food to every creature in a manner that the, the, per, the creature will be satiated based on the creature's will. In other words, 
you feed each creature in a way that the creature will be content. You could have savata to be satiated and a person would still like more. Or you could have a person satiated and they feel they have what they want. Imagine, um, you imagine two people on two different diets. Sometimes it's one person on the same diet at different times. <laughs> but, um, but sometimes a person, they know, they know that the nutritionist told them this should do. And this is, this is what they were supposed to have for lunch. And they're bouncing off the walls. And they can't, they're, they're sure they misread something because there's no way this was enough. And then every now and then you have a person, maybe they've gotten used to the diet, maybe it's different, and they ate a very controlled meal, and you know what? They feel satiated. So the Radak's point is not only do you give satiation to creatures, but if you give them satiation in a manner in which they feel Ratzon, they feel satisfied. So the Malbim took the Ratzon, meaning like, whoa, way more than they need. The Radak says, no, 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 no. They, they, they get enough, and they feel that they've gotten enough. Which, which is an interesting thing to think about. Again, for most, of, for most of us, we don't think that much about food as much as income and our finances and things like that, you know, for, for, for people. And the idea of having what we need and knowing that we have what we need is a remarkable bracha to think about. You know, in other words, when you think about it, one of, one of the greatest worries that we have in life is wondering or worrying if it's enough. So, so, so to have what we need and to have the clarity that it's sufficient is, is a broth in its own right. And I think that's part of the point here. Okay. Um, right. And, and uh, the Ebenezer says the Pshad in Ratzon is he gives each one what it needs. But, okay. But at least at least some, some possibilities as to what we mean by Ratzon. Okay, next verse. Sadiq Hashem Chod Rachav. God is just in all of his ways. The Chassid, the Chomasav. And he is pious, kind in all of his actions. There's clearly a difference between Sadiq and Chassid. Sadiq connotes fear. And chassid connotes beyond fear, like nicer than fear. The, 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 that's the concept. So what's, what's, what's going on over here exactly? Um, so the Radak has a really interesting shot. The Radak says, you know, we're looking at all of, all of life here. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of creatures killing, defeating, conquering other life forms in this world. You don't need to trust me, just watch National, Ge National Geographic a little bit. And, uh, you know, so, but there's, there's a lot of it. So how does that all work? Why, why, why is that so in this world? So the Radak says, you know what? Tzadik Hashem b'chod All of the manners that God has laid out in creatures getting appropriate satiation, which obviously is normally not one coming down from heaven, all of that is all just. And, and the way the Radak says it is, I mean, this is the food chain. One creature eats another creature, and guess what? One day another creature will come and eat this creature. This is part of this. We, we state that we believe it's just. That's how the Radak understands this part of the verse. And Chassid B'chom Asav, and he's kind in all of his deeds, he gives us so much more than he would quote-unquote owes us. That's how the Radak understands the verse. Um, the Ibn Ezra understands the Pasuk slightly differently. He says, a person might come along and say, why is it that one life form gets wheat and another life form gets barley? Why does God do it that way? So he says, we, we state, we believe that God is fair. And God understands the needs of the creatures far better than we do. And, by the way, he doesn't owe us anything. That's the second part of the Pascal the Yavon Esra. Um, one more point before we go on. The Malbim says, Tzadik Hashem B'chod Rochav, God is just in all of his ways. So up until now we've been talking about uh, 
food chain and, and uh, natural items that creatures eat, the Malbim goes somewhere else. The Malbim says, you know what one of the greatest questions is? Tzadik Varala, how could, a, how could a righteous person have something bad happen to him? How could a wicked person have something good happen to him? It's one of the great questions. Famously, we're told that Moshe Rabbeinu asked God this question. And to that, says the Malbim, David Hamela reminds us that we always have to say, Tzadik Hashem Bechot Rachel. There's nothing wrong with asking the question and wondering, but we have to take it as a recognition that we believe God is fair. We might not understand it, we might not see it, but we believe God is fair. So obviously the, you, you can look at it in a very, very macro way or more micro way. It depends. It's a way it's not a kind of person. Okay. Karov Hashem Chol Karov. God is close to all those called him. Chol Asher Yikra'u Bemes. To all who call out to him in truth. So first of all, the Abedesa just makes the point. This is a very significant thing. If the king is far away, there's no way that the king can help a subject who needs something. How's the king supposed to know what the subject needs? One, um, everyone always tries to figure out how, you know, what, what connection will work. Right? We, we always have it again. I do not mean anything politically favorable or critical. But it is, it is common when presidents end their terms for, for people to try to pull all these strings to get pardons for certain individuals. And we all know that uh, whether it's a Republican, whether it's a Democrat, I'm not saying anything about specific people. We all know the way to do it is you find someone who knows the president, who knows someone close to the president, and you hope that when someone explains the specific conditions, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, pull the president's heart free. Let's say you're a simple person who don't know anybody. What are you going to do? Karol Hashem Lechol Karol. God is close to anyone who calls out to him. You don't need to know anybody. You just need to know God. Lechol Asher Yikro Hubemes. Easier said than done. Pass again off to all those who call to him in truth. What does that mean to all those who call to him in truth? The Ebenezer says, we're not talking about people who are calling as an experiment, and we're not talking about people who don't in earnest believe in God. You know, it's interesting. We, I was actually, was, some of the people here were at this class, but we had a class earlier this week. A person made an interesting comment. Uh, a person said, I'm not sure if she's right or wrong, but I'll just say it. Uh, a person said that she thinks that people don't understand, don't appreciate that there's nothing that it's appropriate to be diving to God that we all be well uh, when we have the beginnings of a concern. It's not, it's not like you have to wait for the doctor to come back to you and say, I have no solution. Okay, now let me start diving to God. If we really believe in God, if we really believe in God, then, as, of course, we have to do everything we can in the ways of this world, as we're reaching out to doctors, and as we're trying to work this one and that one, and finding out all the information, we, we also need to be diving to God at the same time. And, and the real thrust of the prayer is that either he just works things on his own, or God can do whatever he wants, but even more practically, let him give chachwa, let him give wisdom, to the medical experts dealing with the person in question. So if we call out to him in truth, now obviously we know famously sometimes we call out to God, and we can call out very passionately to God. For whatever reason, God has his own ways and decides that he's not going to do what we want. We're not guaranteeing that every prayer will go answered the way it wants, the way it's requested. We're not guaranteeing that at all. What we are saying is all the prayers resonate with God. You might not act on based on those prayers, but they all resonate with God. Um, forgive me if I'm repeating something I said. I don't think I said it in this context. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of a muscle for what we're talking about. I, 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 I had an experience a number of years back. Um, I still remember we were living in Bethesda at the time, and uh, it was, there was no minion, like a weeknight 
Marin, anywhere near where we were living. So sometimes I would drive back to Silver Spring to catch Marin, but sometimes scheduling was complicated and literally it would be over an hour to get Marv. In other words, half hour this way, half hour that way. Was, you know, so many times I would have a Marv at home if it didn't work out schedule. So my father called, called us that night, and my father told us that, that uh, my grandfather, who was not living anymore, um, had received a very serious diagnosis, and we should just know that that he was well. Okay. And I thanked him for the call, and maybe I even said I could put it to Hillel, and uh, you know, I made mental note of it. And then I was very bothered. And I said to myself, you know, let's say I was an oncologist. And I would hear that my grandfather had a cancer. What would I do at that moment? I would probably offer my services to help him. Okay, so I'm not an oncologist. This, 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 there's really nothing I can do in the field of medicine for my grandfather. It happens to be I'm a Jew who believes in God. And I can do something else. I can dive in. And the truth is, I've got to believe, again, that not to take away from the medical, medical profession, but I've got to believe that my prayers can be just as potent as the wisdom of a wonderful doctor. It's just a different path. So it can be more potent, actually. So I said to myself, so I would have dropped everything. I would have spent the next hour with someone on the phone, getting, 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 getting scans, this, that. So let me spend the next hour engaged in prayer-related things. So I slept back to Silver Spring for a matter of minutes. Oh, yeah. No, but, 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 but I mean it. In other words, the, the, that's part of, that's a simple, simple muscle for part of what we mean to call out to God, the MS. In truth, to really believe. To really believe. It's, it's, uh, and once that happens, and this is the evidence point at the beginning of the verse, that God really can be close to us. That's all the protection we need. As long as we're trying everything in this world. We have to try all the other stuff. It's always important to remember. I do want to mention the Radak. The Radak says that God is close to all who fall to him, not limited to Jews. If, 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 any, if any human being calls out to God in sincerity, that's a prayer that God listens to, and God hears it. It's also worthwhile to remember. Okay, a little bit further. Ritzon Reyad Yaseh. He will do the will of those who revere him. V'yas Shabbosam Yishma. And he will hear their, their, their pleas. V'yoshie. And he will save them. Let's see the, the two psukim together. The next verse is Shomer Hashem's Kalava. God guards all those who love him. And he destroys all of the wicked. So it's just an interesting thing to think about. So we're talking about people who have fear of God, and we're talking about people who have love of God. The, 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 those are the two consecutive sukkah. But the response is not the same, exactly. The Malbum says that when someone who, and we famously were told that love of God is a higher claim than fear of God. Fear of God is, I better do the right thing because I believe there's a God and I know he has that book and I want to be in the good part of the book. That, that, that's, that's fear of God. Love of God is, I'm so appreciative to God for what he gives me in this world and he gives it to me for a reason. And, 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 and let me let me do great things with what God gives me. It's a different, it's a different attitude. Both are great, but, but but love is even greater. So the Ebenez, uh, the, the Malbum says that when someone is living with a sense of fear of God, so if they're in trouble and they cry out to God, God is very much inclined to help them. Because this is a person who's with the program, who's doing what they're supposed to do. If a person lives with love of God, then God just guards them. In other words, the first scenario was they got into trouble, and they call out to God, and God helps them. The second scenario is God gets rid of the trouble before they even are aware of the trouble. Of course, that's not always the case. Of course, it could be the greatest of, of pious people, the greatest lovers of God. 
I can still decide to take them from this world. I mean, that, that's, that's part of how God operates. But the point is, we believe there's a great merit in serving God in these different ways. Um, the Ebenezer just makes the point that imagine a subject who's terrified of his king. Because that remember, that's the language in the first verse. We normally steer clear of fear because it doesn't feel very good. So we talk about revere and reverence. And, but for this purpose, it really means fear. So the Ebenezer says, imagine a subject who's afraid of his king. So could you imagine he's terrified, you know, his, 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 you know, his lips are trembling, he's about to be brought before the king, and then he's just going to start saying, uh, do you mind if you do this, do you mind if you do that, king? You know, this is a whole list of things I, was, I had in mind. Hopefully you'll help me out a little bit here, Mr. King, your royal highness. Or if the person really is terrified of the king, he just hopes the king doesn't kill him for, for, for not being dressed appropriately. So the Ebenezer says it's a remarkable thing. People come with fear of God, and he'll do whatever they want. Not whatever they want, but he'll, he'll, he'll take great heed to their wishes, to their cries. This is the, the difference between God and flesh and blood. By the way, um, this second part of the plus is real nice. He'll destroy the wicked. Um, some of you might be wondering what button we press to <laughs> get that to happen. Um, so the Radak says that this refers to the world to come, which is also interesting to think about God protecting those who love Him. You know, you know, maybe that's also a little bit the world to come too. You know, because we when we look at things from the perspective of two worlds, it's much easier to understand that's not all clarified in this world. But by the way, this is one of the second the Chafetz Chaim. He has his famous, famous mashal. Imagine listening to a person say, Shomer Hashem is kalu avav be'ez kalar shayim. God guards all those who love him and all the wicked. It's a very disturbing thing. Why should God guard the wicked just like those who love him? Well, you missed the last word. Be'ez kalar shayim yashmid. He'll destroy the wicked. So the, the, the point is, we render judgments on how God runs this world when we have a very limited lens, a very narrow lens. And there's a lot that we haven't seen. We haven't seen things before us. We haven't seen things after us. You know, so we don't really know. But in any event, the fact says that the destruction of the wicked will come in the world to come. The Ebenezer just makes a point. A king of flesh and blood could never make the assurance that all of the wicked people or all of the people who violate the edicts of the kingdom will be punished. Can never make that assurance because sometimes certain evildoers might be, uh, you know, too much to bite off at one time. Um, sometimes the king might not even know what evildoers, what, 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 what people who are rebelling against the kingdom are doing. Only God can say, base closure and passion, and then he'll destroy all of them. Tilas Hashem Yidaber Pi. This is the, the closure. Remember, this is the last verse of the actual chapter to Hillam. Let a mouth express praise of God. And let all flesh bless his holy name for all eternity. Just to express. To express the greatness of God. In some way. Let's give a number of perspectives here. How much we depend on him to to reflect, as the first one explained, to reflect the difference between like, God and, and, and rulers of flesh and blood, to think about the eternity of God, all these different things. But at the end of the day, what we really need to do is we just need to say a little bit. We need to express our thanks and our praise of God. We need to we say brachos. We need to, to, to look at the blessings in our life and recognize that they come from God. And then, as we mentioned at the beginning of the series, this last pasuk is frequently understood as being a lead into the Halilukas, which are the following chapters in Tehillim. This is not a verse from, from this part of Tehillim. We will bless God for, from now and forever. But I do want to reiterate one of the pshatim uh, that we saw, I forgot now from who, is that some of these pshatim are a little bit depressing. We're so hopeless without God, we have nothing without God. That's a little bit, could be a little bit of a downer. So we end on Ashrei that we'll praise God forever. Our souls will live for all eternity. 
is that we only focus on this approach to life. So that's a little bit of a, of a builder up. That's how we close out Ashra. Um, that's, that's, the, that, that's that for Ashra. Any, any comments, questions before we go into maybe some more technical things? I think we can that way. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Stuart, yeah. Just a quick comment. So I like the fact that these last few verses have Korav, Yureav, Ohabav, Kolbasar, and Danatnu. They're sort of talking about all the different kinds of, of people out there and where we might fall on the, on the scale, but all of, us, all of them, and certainly us, feel that we owe God these, these things. Thank you very much. Thank you. And this, uh, I mean, I, I, think it, I think it's a powerful point, this idea that we look out and we're all, and by the way, not only look at other people, look out at all creation and, and, and uh, see the, the little uh, squirrel wandering around by the tree and, and that we, the squirrel only lives by the goodness of God in us too. And, and us human beings, all, all, each and every one of us are created by Salam al Kim, Jewish or not Jewish, all have the capacity to recognize the goodness of God in our lives mm -hmm. and to express it. And again, we've, we've had different references, and, and, and it's a remarkable thing to think about. Yeah, thank you very much. Just to close out and reflect on that. Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to go on to some like, technical halachos of, of Sadiq Zimmer because I said that somewhere in a blurb or fly or something, so I have to do that a little bit. Um, so just to clarify, we, in terms of the structure of Sadiq Zimmer, we mentioned this in the first week, um, Sadiq Zimmer begins and ends with the bracha. begins with the bracha at the end of Baruch Shomar and ends with the bracha at the end of Mishnaba. And therefore that means that everything in between is one long tefillah from bracha to bracha, and it will be considered an interruption to talk idle things in between. So, so people should realize that from the time we say, certainly that we finish Baruch Shemar, through Yishtabach, it's like one continuous tefillah, and we shouldn't be talking at all unless it re relates to, to davening. <laughs> and then the catch is, then the next words after Yishtabach is a new set of tefillah, so you can't talk that either. So basically, from the time of Baruch Shemar until like after Tachar, you're really not supposed to be talking. They, they really did us good, you know, but, but uh, that, that, that's, uh, it is worthwhile to recognize that. So the people have all these questions about, well, so what can I say during Davin? In the sense that many times we're in Shor Davin, Sukkot Zimra, and the minion is somewhere else. It could be that the minion's even ahead of us because we came late, that's possible. So as a general rule, if I'm in the Sukkot Zimra section, I can always say a main to another bracha. Even if it has nothing to do with Sukkot Zimra, but it's just another bracha, I, I can say a main. Um, but Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo is, is, it's really just a nice minog that we have to say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo. So Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo actually would be considered an interruption if I'm, if I'm in, in, in Sukkot Zimra, if that makes sense. But a main is, is, is fine and encouraged. The parallel to that is in Kaddish. There's one response in Kaddish which is akin to Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo in, in, the, in like the second stands of Kaddish Shmei Dekudsha Rich Hu. You know, the host, holy name, blessed be he, and we all respond to Rich Hu. So the truth is, it would not be appropriate to respond to Rich Hu if you're in the middle of Sukkot Zimra, some, anywhere between Rosh Hashanah and Rishnah. But it would be appropriate to respond to Main, Yeshve Rabbah, and things like that uh, during Sukkot Zimra. Um, the, this section of Sukkot Zimra is really considered manners of praising God. So, uh, forgive the very technical point. Let's say a person goes to the bathroom in the middle of that. person just finished Ashray, whatever, they need to go to the bathroom. So normally when we come out of the bathroom, we say the bracha of Ashray Yotzai. But I just told you that you're in this whole long in bracha of Sukkot Zimra. So actually the halakha is it's appropriate to say Ashray Yotzai even though you're in Sukkot Zimra because it's also a praise of God. So you, you so that there's such an idea it's an interesting thing. Um, similarly, if you're if you're in, in Minyan and they're they're doing modem durabanan and everyone and in the repetition when modem and everyone's bound, you could say modem durabanan also, because again it's, it's it's another praise of God. Um it's halacha that if you're in a room and people are saying Shema and you're not up to them. You're supposed to say Shema with them. But it's like I, I sometimes have, for one reason or another, I'm, 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 I already doubt. I'm in a minion, I'm in the room, and there's the next minion that's coming. And, you know, and they start saying Shema. 
So for me, not to say Shema with them is, is disrespectful because there's this public proclamation that God is, is, is our God, and I'm just standing there schmoozing with somebody that's not appropriate. So I'm supposed to say Shema too. So if I'm in Sukkot Zimra, I would say Shema also. Because again, it's another passage of praise of God. Certainly I can answer Kaddish, or I can answer Kedusha, or Baruch Hu, like that. Hold on, one moment if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, yeah, Eli. So when you say you're in Sukkot Zimra, does that mean that if you're in the middle of one of the passages, one of the paragraphs, you can, in the middle of the paragraph, answer Hashem or Baruch Hu, or Shema, Yes. Now, if at all possible, you should try to at least finish a pasuk, or if you're about to finish a paragraph, finish a paragraph, and then kind of wait and say amen. But if, if you didn't time it, well, you can just say amen or yesh or whatever it is. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, and now the area of halacha that I consider myself possibly most proficient at, which is what happens when you come late to shul. So, uh, so Sukkot is Zimra is, is the introduction for Dabin, as we discussed. It's a very important introduction. So let's say I come late to show, and if I, if I sort of shortcut Sukkot Zimra a little bit, I'll be able to catch up and be able to dabash monastery with the congregation. It's a very significant part of tefillah to dabash monastery with the minion, if at all possible. So I can say a more minimalistic version of Sukkot Zimra, that that will enable me to catch up to monastery with the minion. If I'm so late that that won't help me, then I have no license to, to shortcut any Sukkot Zimra. I should dab like everybody else. If, if there are people with me. So the minimalistic version of Sukkot Zimra, as we discussed before, you would say the morning brachos, you know, the, but then once you get to Sukkot Zimra, you would say Baruch Sha'amar, Ashrei Yishtabah. If you have more time, you would say the Halalukas. There's a lot of nuances and variations. If you look at the back there, it's well, sit I don't want to, I don't want to belabor the point. But that's, but the idea, it's not that if you're in a rush, you can say less. It's that if it will enable you to get to Shmon Esri with the minion, you can say less. But you can't skip it entirely. You can't skip it entirely, thank you. Can't skip the yeah. You can't. Let's say you come in and and uh, if you totally skip Sukkot Zimra, then you'll then you will be able to say Shmona Shem with the minion. But so you can't just skip Sukkot Zimra. It's, it's instituted as part of the tefillah. And that's, yeah. Any other questions about halachos maybe Sukkot Zimra? You like? That's a very good question. Um, there are actually different opinions about it. Um, it's normally encouraged, because the bottom of the Sukkot is is that, that Sukkim uh, verses, so it's normally encouraged um, to fill in the Sukkim that one skipped, like after that, maybe something like that. Uh, it's normally looked at as not an absolute obligation. Some say it's, it's sort of an obligation of the moment, so if you end up having to skip, you skip. But it's certainly encouraged, if, if possible, feasible for a person to say the Sukkim. Not to say any bracha parts, Again, you know what I mean, but just the sukkah that they skipped. You could always say that. Yeah, thank you. Anything else, Simon? Okay, so what I just want to speak about, really very briefly, I just want to just talk a drop more about Baruch Shamra and Mishtaba. Um, there's so much more to say about both of them, but I just want to highlight a few points that maybe are of some interest. Um, that you can go to page 58 in the Arts World English. So, Baruch Sha'amar could really be split into two parts. The first part of Baruch Sha'amar is ten praises, ten blessed be he praises of God. And the significance of the number ten, it touches on a point we made earlier in the series of Bapsukha Zimra, Basar Mamaros Nebra Ha'olam, the world was created with ten declarations. And therefore, as we begin our praise of God in the morning davening, we praise God with our mouths and of this beautiful world that he created ten ways. That's the first section of Baruch Shemar. Uh, and then the second section is this bracha that we have. That is a bracha on the idea of saying praise to God. And the closure of the bracha, by the way, the bracha begins with the Baruch HaTu Hashem. If you're on page 58 of the Arts World, starts on the second to last line, near the end of the line, second to last word. But the closure of the bracha is on the next page, Baruch HaTashem, Melech Mulal, Melech Shpachos. You're the God who is, who is praised by praises. You know, so, so that refers to Pesukah Zimra. And, and Pesukah Zimra is one example. Just a technical point, uh, 
that common practice is to hold the two front, for, for men, to hold the two front tzitzis when they say Baroshi Amar. People have heard of that before. Um, so what, what's that all about? You know, why are tzitzis important for Baroshi Amar? And if they are, why are the two front tzitzis for Shema we hold? Four tzitzis, what's that about? So I saw a very interesting thing brought down. So uh, each corner of the tzitzis has eight strings and has five knots. So each corner of the tzitzis represents the number 13. So if I'm holding my two front corners in terms of the, the, the fringes, um, that adds up to 26. 26 is the numeric equivalent of the name of God, Yud K Vav K. And that, that is the name that we frequently associate with his eternal dominion over the world. And so when we talk about praising God, that 26 is in the That works if you tie your tzitzit that way, but there are 10 number of ways to tie your tzitzit. <laughs> no, but, but, but there might be different variations, but the base, I mean, I'm, I'm no expert on tying tzitzit. There's 13 still, that's true. Right. right. So, so the, I see. those things, there, yeah. Variations on 13, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's not mix you with the presentations you've Sorry. sponsored over the years, Mr. Rosenthal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what what I would like to do, I, I'd like again. We don't have the time to go through all the brachshama, but I just want to share two comments from the Abu Draham that, that resonate with me, maybe in light of some of the things we've discussed. So, one point he makes is in the introductory lines of brachshama. There's a line, Baruch Merachem Al Habrios. Blessed is the one who has compassion for the creatures, for the creations. So the Abudraham says, you know, there are people who say that there's no way that God could be interested in every life. God wants to make sure that the species maintain. God wants to make sure mankind is all right. God wants to make sure the whales are okay. God wants to make sure the, the, the eagle survives. But this specific creature, that specific creature, this specific person, huh? he, doesn't have, he doesn't have time for that. He's got better things to worry about. So the Abu Dram says, that's who we're addressing. We say, Baruch Merachem al Habrios. Blessed be the one who has compassion for the creations. Not the species of creation, but the creations. The point is we believe, certainly, certainly for mankind, we believe that God has an active interest in each and every one of us. And that's, uh, that's uh, the point that Udra makes in this context. Um, and just, it also fits in something we discussed a few moments ago. We have the line, a couple lines later, Baruch Mishalem, Sachar Tov Liriyah. Blessed be the one who pays a good reward to those who have reverence for him. So the Abu Dram says, you know, you might wonder, how does this work with, with bad things happening to good people? And therefore, it's a statement of belief in beginning of our doctrine, that we firmly believe that whether it's in this world, whether it's in the next world, people do good things, God rewards them. That's the point he pays a good, good reward to those who are right. Like I said, there's many more points, I just wanted to highlight those too. And unless someone has a comment, we can, we can go to Yishtabach, and does something with Go to Yishtabach on page 82. Now, so first of all, we keep on talking about the brachos. The brachos, if you look on page 82, um, near the end of Yishtabach, there's some very nice insignia that's assigned to the chasm to start his thing, and it's followed by the word Baruch HaTu Hashem. So that's the bracha which closes up, so presume. Probably the most famous part of Yishtabach is the line that begins in the second line. Ki Hashem Elokeinu Elokei Yavu say, to you it is appropriate, our God and the God of our fathers, Shir, Ushbacha, Haleo, Mesimra, Oz, Memshala, Netzach, Ketulo, Gura, Tilav, Siperes, Kedusha, Malchus, Rachos, Yadavos, Veto, Yadavos, All these things are appropriate to you. Songs, praises, strength, governance, eternity, and so many other synonyms that I, I, I don't have the good words to not say the same thing again and again. Maybe that's where English has it better. There are 15 of these listed here. And by the way, the, I believe it's the Kuzari, I think it's the Kuzari, who says that 
part of the beauty of biblical Hebrew, what we call Lashon Kodesh, Lashon Kodesh, literally the sacred language, is that you learn a lot about language from its synonyms. It says the fact that there are so many synonyms for praise of God speaks to the essence of what the language is about. So it says you could have another language that there are numerous words for war or for other things. And in here we have the key terms about praise because that's what we're about. That's, what, what our, that's one of the greatest forms of our language of communication. So there's 15, and this is understood to parallel the 15 Psalms of David, Shir Hamalus, the songs of ascent. That, that, that is referenced in the temple, etc. Okay, it's an interesting idea. A couple, couple more points. The Rebar Yakar points out that the line that we just referred to before the 15 languages, to you, Hashem, our God, it's appropriate, all these different praises. The Rebar Yoker says, it's a remarkable thing that we can look at God, so to say, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna hang some terms on you, God. We think these terms hit the spot. And it's not even to our king, it's to you. Like I'd, like I'd be schmoozing with Mrs. Sperling. You know, you, hey, you. It's not, you know, king, master. To you is fitting, Hashem, the following terms. And I, I normally compare Mrs. Sperling the way I relate to you to relate, the way I relate to God. You know, <laughs> that's what I think of you. So, uh, so the, re, the Rebar Yakar says, the Medrash teaches that when Cloud Israel is doing the will of God, then Cloud becomes closer to God, and the feeling is much more a personal connection. So at the end of Sukkot Zimra, we express ourselves in this manner, in, 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 in really the most personal ways. Because the hope is that we've forged a more meaningful dynamic with God through Sukkot Zimra. But that's what he says. And I actually want to close, or begin by closing with a question that someone sitting here in the room emailed me the other day during this series, but I don't know if he wants to be singled out, so if he does, he can raise his hand. If not, he doesn't have to. It's so interesting that we have the chazan come up at Yishtab. Very strange thing that we have the chazan come up at Yishtab. What we've been describing is Yishtab is the end of something. But it, it's not the beginning of the next thing. You know, Baruch or Kaddish, whatever is the beginning of the next thing. Yishtab is the end of it. So the Rebbe Yoker is a very interesting idea. So I, I should just first of all say that technically speaking, there's no role for the Chazan until immediately following Yishtab. What we do, we have a person up there to set the pace and end off a section. That's really more to keep everybody on the same page. But it's not, the first technical role of the Chazan is when he says the Kaddish. Father Mishnah, because that's something that you need a minute to do, etc. So the Rebbe Yankar has a very interesting idea. The Rebbe Yankar says, we have the famous verse, Vayi Bishumun Melech Bis Asif Rashayon. They are, it will be, they are, God will be the king when the heads of nation all come together. It's a famous thing we talk about a lot Rosh Hashanah time. That one of the basic ways in which we can coordinate God in our own lives is if we have unity we all stand together and we're all interested in each other because we share our belief in God, we share our devotion to God, and wow, God is really a melech, God is really a king because we're all as loyal subjects, we form a people, we form a nation. But if I have no interest in you and you have no interest in me and I don't care what you think about God, I don't care what I think about God, so we're a nation of individuals, that's not much of a kingdom. So here it is, we're finishing off our praise of God. And before we finish off our praise of God, even though technically speaking, there's not a role yet for a chasen. As I mentioned, really the chasen's first technical role is after Yishtab, with Kaddish. But as we conclude Pesukah Zimra, the Prex and Klaus roles, you send someone up to represent the minion. Because when you send someone up to represent the minion, 
you've clarified that you're one group of people praising God. Oh, so you've stood together, you've had Sukkot Simra, you've had these songs of praise, you're ready to go out the next part of davening. But before you go on to the next part of davening, and Kaddish, and Barfu, and Shema, and Shemon Esrei, you make sure to unify yourselves. We make sure, we <laughs> make sure to unify ourselves before we finish with Sukkot Simra. And that's why the Rebar Yonker says, the Chazan goes up at the end of Sukkot Simra, before it's over. Start serving that capacity. So for we, we have a chazan anyway. So if we're going to switch it, we switch it at that point. Sort of makes the same, makes the same point. I thought it was an interesting, it was an interesting perspective. And maybe I'll just close out with one thought I saw from Rav Schwab. And then if anyone has any questions, we'll, we'll open up for questions for a few minutes. He says there are two languages frequently used for praise of God. Zemir and Shira. Both, both connote song in, 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 in one way or another. Now, of course, this section of davening is Psuke de Zimra. It's verses of song, but it's, it's a relation to the word Zemra. It's a really remarkable point. The root Zion Memresh in the Chumash sometimes means to cut away. Uh, for example, when it talks about pruning a tree, the language is low sismor, same, same shalosh. And in, in uh, Talmudic language, a shear sometimes, which was the other language, a shear could be a chain that connects. So he says there are two ways for us to really focus our prayers to God. One way is the mode of pruning everything else away, sort of, you know, zoning everything else out and just focusing myself on God and I'm not going to think about who won the Super Bowl and I'm not going to think about the front page of the post. I'm just not going to think about it. I'm just going to focus on myself and God. It's one way to do it. And the other way to do it is just not as much I'm going to zone out everything else, but I'm going to focus more on my personal emotional connection. Sort of, it's sort of like two sides of the same coin. But anyway, I thought this was a very interesting idea. So he says, Zemir is praise of God that prune away everything else. And Shira is the praise of God that draws me closer to him. I thought that was just an interesting idea I just wanted to share. So we should just be so fed that, uh, again, I thank everyone for coming. I thank Stuart for, for organizing. But the more, the more we think about these things, the more we reflect on these things, hopefully the more the feel experience is meaningful for us. And uh, God willing, and, then, and the more the first part of the is meaningful for us, the more the rest of the is meaningful for us, the more the rest of the day is meaningful for us. So any, any comments or questions? Nancy. Like the mourner's cottage. Yeah. Right, so that's a good point. So that's, you're right. That's something that's added, so the mourner should be able to, to, to praise God's name. But but if there's no mourner present, it's not like oh we we need we need to have a kaddish now. You, you know, there you know what I mean. It's 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 really to for the sake of the mourner, honestly. But it's not it's not essential for the prayer service. Kaddish for Abanim, yeah. The first kaddish that's core to the prayer service is this one after Yishava. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Elaine. It's interesting. Um, I'll just repeat the question just in case people didn't hear it. Why does it say that God has compassion on the earth before it says God has compassion on his creations? Um, I, I think it might be because Aretz was created, the earth was created before the inhabitants of the earth. There's a whole thing which I did not get into tonight. There's a whole thing that it's supposed to, that these specific clauses are supposed to be patterned after the declaration with which the world was created. So there's a whole question in terms of the order of things. Um, I suppose that's the shot. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.